All right, tonight's lesson, <clears throat> lesson 22, and uh, we'll be looking at uh, Revelation 13. You had two weeks to prepare for this, so I know, uh, I know you're excited, you got all the answers, and... Uh, yeah. I think this is getting harder. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just said that today. <laughs> she came in to leave clothes at our neighbor and I said, we're going to sit next to you. I don't understand this. <laughs> but I did, I mean, the mess was my imagination or whether it's harder. It's harder, just, it's harder to understand. I did give a hand out. Did you get that? No. It's, it's just a little test. We'll grade you on. That'll make me a wreck. Yeah. 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 Chappie needs two of them. I don't know. Hopefully, this this won't confuse you um, more than you all <laughs> you may already be. But uh, well, we'll let you know. That okay. <laughs> as we as we go through uh, the text tonight, and as we uh, go through the questions, maybe you'll be able to correlate some of what I've given you from this table. Basically, it's just a table, two sides: uh, the eternal truth and the and the final parody. And what we're looking at tonight is on the right side. And it just compares to uh, the Trinity and how it's basically uh, what transpires is a, a mockery uh, by Satan uh, of the, uh, the Trinity. And uh, we'll see how that kind of correlates as we go through this tonight. Uh, we find uh, here in Revelation the man that the scriptures call the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, and the beast is a man who appeared as the savior of the world. The man who has all the answers, he solves the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, he brings a sense of peace to the world, and he leads the millions of people on earth to a time, uh, uh, into a time of great disaster, and yet he is uh, evil, and Satan is a great copycat of God. And that's uh, kind of what we're showing here with this table I gave you. Anything that God does, Satan tries to replicate, to deceive. And here in this chapter, we find the unholy trinity, a set of three evil characters, who are key to Satan's final attempt to win the battle over God. And uh, in each lesson, it's uh, each week, they've, they've given us a couple memory verses and uh, I've never really looked at them too much, but in tonight's, it's taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, verses 17 and 18. And I just thought it, uh, I thought this was pretty fitting. Uh, beginning there with verse 17, it says, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the air of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. So our, our chapter that we're looking at tonight, chapter 13, we can read it, we can take the time for that, or we can just skip over that and go to the questions. How do you all, I've, we've always read them, but I don't know if that's necessary. Go on once. Just go to the questions. That's what I was looking for. Somebody who'd be decisive. Just go. All right, let's go to the questions. I figure you probably, if you've answered the questions, you've already looked at uh, the... Mm -hmm. All right, the last time we were together, we were looking at Revelation chapter 12, and uh, it was the ongoing and bitter hatred of the, of the devil and uh, against his redeemed people of God. And uh, we talked about the woman, uh, the Christ, uh, who was uh, the ascended child, the woman's ascended child, 
And then we also saw the dragon who was rushing off uh, to prepare war against those who uh, obey God. And he does that by calling up two vile monsters. Uh, most of our texts call it beasts, but really if you look at the uh, translation, it, it really comes down to monsters um, to serve him. So question one, what does John see in this vision in, in verse one? The beast. Uh, one of my one of my Bible versions says dragon. So <laughs> dragon is what I said. All right. So th th this is this is still that dragon that we're bringing mm -hmm. uh, over from chapter twelve, and and we and we talked about in chapter twelve who is that dragon? Satan. 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 Yeah. And what were some of the other names we, we found uh, the last time we were together that uh, he's also called? Other names for Satan and... The devil. The devil, serpent of old, the group. The yells of old. Yep. All right, in this uh, verse, what does the word see uh, typify? Uh, well, not only here, but throughout Revelation, what does the word see normally typify? Humanity. Yeah, all the nations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In biblical terms, it's regarded the sea as a wild, untamed, frightening place. Hmm. And that's true, too. But as, as we go through this, and, and we're going to compare the, the sea with the land here in a minute when we look at the two, and uh, the author of our book kind of does it in a way that I really didn't find anywhere else in uh, uh, my research. But uh, what is the, the next thing that John sees after he sees the dragon? He's the beast. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this first beast, where does this creature come from? Out of the sea. Out of the sea. Out of the nations, out of the, out of the people uh, as a whole. And what is the significance of this? Well, he's going to be a man of political power that's going to be over the nations. Mm -hmm. Yep. In your book, uh, there's a note that the author has there. It says, remember this interlude is a flashback to the beginning of the tribulation period. Satan will enter the Antichrist at the beginning of his reign or his terror on earth. And at this point, the Antichrist will become a dictator, controlling the whole world and everything in it. The economics, religion, politics, culture. At the midpoint of the tribulation, he turns against the Jewish people and sets himself up as God and demands worship. And we've, we've kind of discussed that almost in every, every lesson that we've, we've talked about. Question three says, how many horns and heads and diadems did he wear? Ten horns, seven heads, and ten diadems. All right, and what is the meaning of the ten horns and the seven heads and that wore the crowns? Horns represent power and authority. Mm -hmm. um, it could be the the powerful empires like started with Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Greece, Persia, and Rome, and then the restored Rome in the end of times. And it's the same description given for the dragon. Yeah, just mirrors what the yeah. what the master of the dragon had. And for the for the dragon, it it meant wisdom and power, and it basically means the same thing here for the for the beast. All right. The body parts. Um, well, first of all, the blasphemous name on each head suggests a claim. Uh, to, to, to divine status. And the body parts of this brute are a composite of three of the four creatures that we read about when we, before we started Revelation back in Daniel 7, verses 1 through 6. 
and in those verses Daniel said I was looking at my vision at night and behold the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea and four great beasts were coming up from the sea different one from another the first was like a lion another beast a second one resembling a bear <clears throat> And behold, another one like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. So this is basically this description is uh, taken from the same beast of Daniel's vision. And in Daniel's vision, these represent a historical empires uh, that opposed Judah. So here they're combined into one monster, which, like uh, Doris said, it was a, a political political, military power. What was written on the seven heads? Blasphemous names. Blasphemous names. Names against God. Yes. And how is this beast-like man further described in, in verse 2? It says, notice the like words for each one, write what this symbol means. And you can refer back to Daniel's vision as well. Like a, like a leopard. Swift to destructions. Very fast to conquer. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, feet like a, a bear's feet. Devour. He will devour anybody that's not for him. Well, when I looked it up, it said something about uh, the beast of Daniel is well known to represent the empire of the Greeks. The, the leopard is Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. uh, the bearish feet is the Medo Persian Empire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. the uh, one of the line of the mouth is Nebuchadnezzar. Yep. So yeah. Is that the, the Babylonian power? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so, the, and the feet of clay. I don't want to grow. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, okay. That was the, the, the empires that he was talking about in his vision, but, mm -hmm. you know, like. Like the leopard, we were dripping that speed and the bear destruction, and uh, the lion uh, represents uh, strength and majesty. But power in his words. People will listen to him and be mesmerized by him. A pastor, in any of your studies or anything, have you ever heard that the Antichrist will come because the Roman Empire will be reestablished? that he will be coming out of the Rome, Roman area. Yeah. That's what I have always studied yeah. and heard, that the Antichrist will come, put your eyes on what's going on in mm -hmm. Rome, and that's, the Antichrist will come out in one of those areas there. Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, it, but it doesn't have to really be Rome. It can be in no. that area. Mm -hmm. in that area. The Roman yeah, Empire. I heard that. I yeah. That we, I think we talked, well, we talked, we talked, touched on that one yeah. time. I've seen a video that they was on YouTube where it talked about that. Yeah. And I thought, hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah, because the new Roman Empire won't just be Italy. It'll be a big, massive area that'll be there. A lot of Europe and everything, but he'll be coming out of somewhere. The original somewhere Roman there. Empire was not just Italy. No. Mm -hmm. No. It, it even no. said, it even, the world. Yeah, it even said that the Catholic Church will go down before he comes out. A, a lot of the uh, reference to the little horn, though, a lot of them think that that's referring to Italy because of mm -hmm. its small, mm -hmm. smallness mm -hmm. compared to the other countries. But whenever that time comes, it's who knows what size these countries are going to be anyway. But mm -hmm. yeah. what did the dragon uh, give to the beast? Power, power, throne, great authority. And he was going to conquer the conquer the world. Mm -hmm. And and if you go back to this comparison uh, that I gave you on the chart, you know, the, if the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and then the uh, the parody um, Trinity of the dragon, the water monster, and the earth monster, if the dragon is the parody of God. He, he gave power. Christ had the same power. 
he gave the authority and power to Christ and, and the dragon's doing the same thing here uh, with the beast. Read Daniel chapter 7, verses 7 through 8, and verses 19 through 27, and write down what further truths uh, you learn about this beast. What did you learn? It's going to be a different kind of kingdom from all the other kingdoms, and it should devour the whole earth and trample it down. Break it into pieces, the ten horns and or ten kings, and another shall rise from them. He will be different from the former ones, and shall put down three kingdoms. He will speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Will change the times and the law, and they will be given into his hands for three and a half years. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. The greatest of all kingdoms when under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints most high. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom. That was... <laughs> <Not exactly. laughs> that was pretty good. Do you remember when we talked about this before? I don't know how long ago that's been now. Yeah, but I do remember. Yeah. yeah. What happened to uh, one of the heads of this beast? He got wounded. And when the beast was killed, what resulted from this so-called miracle? <laughs> the world marveled at him. Mm -hmm. They, they worshipped the beast. Yep, they worshipped And it, I think this is in your book. It says, this seems to indicate that the Antichrist of the future will attempt to mimic Christ's death and miraculous resurrection through his own deceptive injury and resuscitation. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just like Satan. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the one who disguises himself as the angel of light will provide the world with a copycat Christ to match all their man-centered ideals of personality, politics, and power. No wonder the whole world will be swept off its feet by this attractive, persuasive figure. It, it still amazes me that for the people to have, have seen the rapture occur and still go, go through all the things they go through and they're still, they still have these scales over their eyes and they can't, they don't see. Mm -hmm. Eight, listen to me. <laughs> uh, this part of mid-trib, like or when this is starting and everything, about in a third of the population of the world's already gone. Right. But you would think that would wake them up. Yeah, they've had all kinds of things to wake them up, and they're still... Yeah, but if they don't believe in, in God, then they probably don't even know where they went. Mm -mm. They probably have no idea. Mm -hmm. Or they don't believe. That's a thought. Because if you believed, then you that should shake you up enough to do something. But <laughs> apparently, if, you know, you think about it. If a third of the world population all of a sudden vanished, when you well, this is after the rapture. Yeah, yeah. A, third, a third of them is going to be killed after the rapture, and that'll be yeah. yeah but I mean, earthquakes. When everything. you have the rapture. When all these people disappear in the rapture, you know, it, I, I would think that would cause people to start thinking a little bit. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of deception about that, too, about what happened. Scientists, aliens, who, yeah. 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 alien abduction. Yeah, be all they had a stuff. thing. I was watching John Hagee, and he always talks about the end times, and he was saying that when that happens, and... It's all stopped. Everybody's going to be trying to text, and they won't be able to text. He said they'll go crazy because they can't text. <laughs> That'll probably be the most important thing to a lot of people is they can't text. No more Facebook. <laughs> the first thing, though, before you even know what's going on is you got to know what's in the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what's in there, then you're not going to know what's going on. True. Yep. So you think that, people would ask questions when 
people disappear and, mm -hmm. you know, at least be curious about well, where'd they go? <laughs> yeah, leave the part of this lesson and I will get, when we get to it, I get questions. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> Well, I think we answered number nine. Uh, who will the people of Earth worship? Well, they're they're still worshiping the dragon. They mm -hmm. their eyes are still uh, closed to to God. Why do they worship these two, and what do they say about the beast? Who is like this beast? Who yeah. is able to war with him? Yeah. No one likes him. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and what was given to the beast? Mouth. The mouth. And what did he say with it? Arrogant words. Yeah. And how long was uh, permitted to do this? 42 months. 42 months. All right. Question 11 says, verse 6 says that the beast, or the Antichrist, cursed God, his name and his tabernacle, which is uh, all who dwell in heaven. The words that this man utters are repeated many times. All the great dictators of this world have risen to power because of their use of speech. Adolf Hitler, as much as he dis is despised today, could mesmerize huge crowds with his speeches. And Daniel 7.11 says, Then I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking. The idea is a continuous flow of boastful, arrogant, and blasphemous words that flowed from this man's mouth. What is blasphemy? The acts or offensive, uh, offenses of speaking sacrilegiously about God and sacred things, profane all. It's just the, it's the act of offensive speaking sacrilegiously about God or sacred things. Write down some verses from the Bible that prohibit blasphemy and what God thinks of it. My goodness, I can't the mind chop one. Sure. 33 on the first one I looked up. <laughs> was there was there any? I'll just ask you if there was one or two that that stuck out to. The one that stuck with me was um, Matthew twelve thirty one thirty two, the unpardonable sin. Therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But who ever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. And mine, Luke 12, opinion is the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one I had. Yeah, that was in yeah. one of the verses that I looked up. And the other one I got, one of the ones that stuck out to me was Leviticus 24, 11 that's through 16, got. where the law, the law of Moses was to stone to death anyone who was blaspheming God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's there's several more, but uh, those those are all good. In verse seven, notice the phrase that was given to him. This indicates that his authority, power, even his mouth, was given by a greater power. Notice also that his time is limited. How long is it that he has? Forty-two months. Forty-two months. And who's actually in charge here? And we know that by this limit. God. God, yeah. Mm -hmm. The dragon's in charge of the beast, but God is the only one in charge of everything. That's Absolutely. Absolutely. But Satan will seem like he's victorious to the people. Mm -hmm. He won't be. He will be the fool. And like I've been saying since we started this study, that all this knowledge should still give us comfort and peace. Next question, there is war on earth. Who does the beast make war with? The saints. And who are the saints? <laughs> Who 
All the believers. Yeah. All the believers that are left. Yeah. Who wins in this war? God wins. Mm -hmm. The beast wins the first round, but they don't win those. Okay. No, he doesn't have the final victory. Mm -hmm. And we know uh, God has the final victory. Who will worship the Antichrist? Verse 8. All who dwell on the earth, mm -hmm. all whose name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. So there's where my question comes in. All right. So not only here, but by some of Paul's writing too, you know, it says that about predestined, which I know this is a Calvinistic view, which would be predestined. But it's still. Every time I read it, confuses me a little bit. Because it says the ones whose names written before the foundation of the world. So is it that God has predestined certain people one way or the other? Or is it that's where I'm always confused. <laughs> is on the predestined stuff. Yeah. Uh, if the names are written from the foundation of the world, God not either He already knows what your answer is going to be, one way or the other, or certain people have chosen and certain people have not. And then they somewhere in one of the Old Testament uh, books. I don't remember where it's at. It says God will show mercy to who He show, will show mercy on, and not to who He that will not. So that's always give me pause for reflection, and I've never I've been heard satisfied that with that. Before, mm -hmm. that. If everything is preordained, then you know. And, and, and that's a tough one, and that <laughs> and that and that goes, uh, and that's and that splits a lot of splits a lot of people, a lot of denominations, it splits uh, over the Calvinistic, whether the predestination. Mm. Now, and I think it comes down to whether you say God pre-wired people knowing the ones that would eventually become his and the ones he pre-wired people knowing that they never would. My belief is he knows all things before yeah. from the beginning time he knows all things this is my belief I think he knows all things from the beginning time he knows he knows the end score before it happens right. and and just because he knows who's in the Lamb's book of life that's it that's where the knowledge ends you know what I'm saying uh, no, nobody else knows and that's why it's it's imperative that we we never give up on like on any anybody on a lost soul, um, and, and we can't say, well, that one you know was. Um, that's that's what I'm saying is, is if it's if God already knows if he if he knows and he does know. They some people don't make no difference what you do, or not going to be saved. But we're given it's, that free choice, that yeah. free will to accept. But I, I see what you're saying. And it is a difficult question to answer. It is, because this is not, like I said, it's in some of Paul's writings too. Mm -hmm. It's not just here in Revelations. And then, like I said, there's a passage in the Old Testament about God will have mercy on who he will have mercy on. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's one place that says favor was raised to show God's power, you know. Yeah. So, uh, um, but yet also just, in its word it says that you wish no one would perish. I, I mean, that's why it's the lady delay of coming back. Mm -hmm. is that he that's what I'm right. saying. It's just that one. Area. Area. It's that one uh, it, it's just the. I'm just, it ain't happened. So God hasn't shown me. He didn't it, tell us to go if there was a purpose in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. To go and make disciples. Yeah. He, he didn't tell us to go and make disciples of all nations and baptize if there was no purpose in it. There's, there's got to be purpose in it. Yeah. 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 I agree. Like I said, it's just, uh, 
I hadn't got it clear in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Now, okay. now, of course, there's going to be people who disagree with that. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. that. Uh, yeah. There's going to be people that disagree with that and, and say that the, regardless, there's some people out there, no matter what, are never, never, ever, you're wasting your time. Right. I don't think you're wasting your time on any soul myself. As long as they've got a breath, mm -hmm. they're, they're worth the work that God tells us to go. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know for sure exactly how it is, mm -hmm. so we better do what we are supposed to do. And, and uh, Well, I mean, that's what we're supposed, we supposed to do regardless of the yes. outcome. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's not us that saves anybody. God is right. the one that mm -hmm. saves all. And if... Uh, if, if he don't put the Holy Spirit in them, it don't make no difference what you say. And your part may just be only to plant a seed and somebody else's part may be to water it mm -hmm. to grow. And, you know, but anyway. But you're doing what he wants you to do. Right. It, doesn't, it doesn't make any difference if the outcome is right. not what you think it should be. That's right. Now, I agree with that part. There ain't no argument on that part. It's just that that whole little stuff right there. <laughs> that, uh, we had lessons on that before and uh, yeah, it's, I don't think every, anybody ever came to a foregone conclusion exactly. No, and there's some things we won't understand. We will not understand, we will not understand right. at all. Exactly. And some of Paul's writings are, um, he's sometimes kind of hard Pastor Paul's a little hard to follow sometimes because <laughs> he'll say it. something like in Romans or 1 Corinthians and by 2 Corinthians you're thinking well, he said the opposite but then you've got to look and research so yeah he's sometimes a little hard to well, you know, some too. of the things that he says mm -hmm. well, we just finished right. I feel put back. things long enough <laughs> <laughs> get ready to start the book of Romans. Yes. Yeah, Paul wrote. Yeah. So it's been interesting. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, 16. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written in the book of life of Lamb, life of the Lamb who has been slain from the foundation of the world. The Antichrist will claim worship from everyone on the face of the earth except what group of people? The believers in Christ called the saints. Do you think this rebellion of righteous people against the rule bothers the Antichrist? He's sure pretty mad. If it doesn't bother him, he's, I mean, he's hunting people down and killing them. He's want all to worship him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about him. And isn't that what he's doing today? Yeah, yeah absolutely. He's wanting to get us into our entertainment, TV, whatever, social media, whatever, uh, schools, whatever. He's trying to get into, uh, to get people to follow him more than anybody else. Than God. God gives us what warning in verse 9? And why do you think he inserts it here? This will never have ears. Let him hear. hear yeah. Him Open your ears. <laughs> He's saying if uh, you better heed what God says mm -hmm. and you better obey it. This is coming to the unbelievers and the believers after the rapture. Mm -hmm. Yep. In verse 10, we're told that God foreordains the kind of punishment and death of each wicked person who rebels against him. Remember, even in the middle of the Antichrist's horrible reign, God is in control. What is the perseverance and faith of the saints? They stay true to God, even in persecution. They're go they got their eyes, their heart on God, and they're going to die for their faith. Mm -hmm. so they're going to be slayed by the sword or burned in fire, but I mean, they're going to... See, she, she's alluding to me. She's alluding to that the, the evil ones are going to receive this kind of death, but mm -hmm. in my way of reading it is the saints that's going to be 
Yeah, Huge that's one of those that. things I don't uh, I know, I agree with her on there. I know, that's because, like I said, you know, where God ordains the kind of punishment of death of the, each wicked person, but this, to me, is talking about the saints and the way they are the treated and killed. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, that was one of the places where I didn't didn't follow what she was saying. And yeah, I didn't agree with her. What she was going, the direction she was going on that one. But. <clears throat> All right, question 19. What did John see next in verse 11? Another beast. Another beast. Mm -hmm. And this one's the false prophet. And where does this person come from and how is he described? From the earth. With two horns, like a lamb, mm -hmm. and spoke like a dragon. Mm -hmm. When I looked it up, it said many understand this to be a reference to Israel because this beast sets up an idol in the temple. The first beast rises up from the Gentile world. The second beast rises from Israel and poses as a lamb. The second beast is apparently a Jew who may present himself as Israel's Messiah, whose speech is satanic and he deceives his followers. I didn't see that in any of mine. Oh, but, uh, mm -hmm. when looked, that's what, when I looked it up, that's what it said. But there's a lot of different <laughs> interpretations. I didn't see that in, in, in mine, but that's... Let's take a closer look at the symbolism involved in this description. Look at each one and write down what you think might be suggested by this mental picture. First of all, that says it comes up out of, of the earth. From now, power in the hands of secular authorities. Mm -hmm. Being demon possessed, possibly, because that's what she's alluding to in this text down here, too. Yeah. She alludes to that. I actually didn't find that in any mind. I didn't either, but I mean, that's... Uh, that mind didn't really say anything about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two horns like a lamb. When I'm not here as a docile lamb, gentle and harmless. Mm -hmm. It could be mild, yet straightforward, and it come from a Roman or Jewish authority. Religious, religious, Roman religious or Jewish religious authority. Okay. Uh, spoke like a dragon. Ravenous wolves that come in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. Very deceptive. All speaking, prophesying will come from the dragon. Speaks like a politician. That's why I read the top two beasts of life, secular, political yeah. power, and religion during the Roman period of the last day. Yep. <laughs> Question 21 says, this man will be the spiritual leader and the second in command under the Antichrist. He is like a high priest for the Antichrist religion. In verses 12 through 14, what does this man do with the great authority and power that he receives? Two word, he'll be a weapon of mass deception. <laughs> <laughs> and it says something about this is a tr uh, trinity of evil is mm -hmm. now complete. Mm -hmm. The beast from the earth is under the authority of the beast from the sea. The latter is subject to the dragon or Satan, secular power, religious compromise. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet join against the cause of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sets up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword yet lived. So, sets up like when Christ was, was uh, slain and, and he rose up. Right. And he'll perform great uh, signs, fire from heaven, Yep. Hmm. 
did everything he could to deceive people to, mm -hmm. to believe that uh, the Antichrist was the true God. Weapon of mass deception. <laughs> <laughs> Look up the word deceive in the Greek language and write down here what you learn and how it applies to what this man is doing to people across the face of the earth. To deceive, act deceitfully, mm -hmm. use fraud, using uh, faith to pull someone in, preying on people who are blinded by their own bitterness, greed, or lust. This makes them easy prey to ensnare. Anybody else? I think you covered it, but is that me? I, I think so. it is. <laughs> I thought it was a furnace. Oh, it's a furnace. Oh, okay. Nobody <laughs> left their windows down, did they? <laughs> no. Not in this kind yeah, of they bring an <laughs> Not in downtown. <laughs> what is the... How does the false prophet deceive the world, and what, and by what power is he working? Yeah. Well, you brought it up, Doris, I think. Mm. Uh, he uses signs and wonders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same answer as 21. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he is a prophet who promotes Satan, not God. Right. Yep. In the last part of verse 14 and 15, we find this man doing something very interesting. What does he do? One thing, he gives power of breath to the beast as it speaks. Mm -hmm. yep. He tells him to make an image mm -hmm. to the beast and makes it speak. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth. Mm -hmm. And the power to slay those who didn't worship the image of the beast. Yeah. All kinds of images you can come up with there. Mm -hmm. But you stop and think. It's what Nebuchadnezzar, you know, if you didn't bow down and worship him, you would be thrown in yeah. fiery furnace, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be, you know, if you don't bow down to this beast, the image of this beast and stuff, you're going to be killed mm -hmm. if you don't bow. In the second part of verse 15, so that the image of the beast would even and cause as many as not worship the beast to slay as many as the beast not worship the image and we might not find this too far from the realm of possibility in today's world of animation and cyber images and I think about this uh, artificial intelligence that's in the news so much now mm -hmm. that was nice was it? yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's scary it is, it's extremely it's scary, scary. And the, and the fact that we're just hearing about it makes me know that they've been yeah. dealing with it for years. But uh, yeah. even with technology, there's something very evil at work here. In what ways do you see Satan deceiving the world today? Right there. The AI and all the media. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what used to be society would say would be sinful. They're being accepted by society now. And if you speak out against it, you're going to, you know, there's certain things we can't talk about. You yeah. know. Basically, they're just convincing people that it's okay to live in their sin. That's mm -hmm. what it comes down to. You're hated if you don't go by the norms of what mm -hmm. the society is going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of my family was talking the other day, and uh, I don't really watch much TV anymore because, mm -hmm. to me, I, I just don't like it. But uh, we were sitting watching uh, at Carol Burnett's special for her 90th birthday. Oh, okay. And we were remembering, I could remember my father loved her. And he laughed so hard that he mm -hmm. cried. And he loved it. But you don't have people, uh, we were talking amongst ourselves, that we don't have shows on TV mm -hmm. that you can laugh at and really mm -hmm. enjoy. Mm -hmm. They all have a political undertone of some kind. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I even if I have a hard time finding anything to to even watch on TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do stream and try pure flix. Streaming what? Yeah. If it's you do streaming flicks. TV, if you stream TV, 
No. Okay. Yeah. Ah. There's one eating stream that's called Pure Flix. That's got a lot of Christian. It's, I haven't yeah. had TV no. for a couple of years. It is. And I don't miss it at all. We downloaded it about a week or a week and a half ago. It's, it's got a whole lot of Christian based. Uh, one of them is the little girl that believes in miracles, which was a fantastic movie. But anyway. I'll have to try and see if yeah. you know, maybe you can get that for me. Because it's terrible. I, I go. Uh, it's basically in the winter time when it gets dark so early, and of course my husband can watch a cowboy movie and he's happy <laughs> all night and watch the same movie. Yeah, we, we, we've caught several movies on there. Yeah, it's it's pretty dang good. Some of them are based on true stories too. That yeah, no vacancy. one called No Vacancy, and it was based on that a church, church in Florida. 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 Yeah, but, but really I, good. We were talking about too the old TV shows like the Bob Newhart show. And, Mary Tyler Moore mm -hmm. and New Heart. I, like, yeah. I still and watch all, all them. That's what no I like. There was first words in it. There was no political mm -hmm. undertone. They were just funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you have nothing of that anymore. You want to watch free TV? It's Pluto TV, and they have it's an app and it's totally free. They have all the old shows that we used to watch all the time on there. Everything. And I've watched Andy Griffin and Walton's and Andy Griffin. But yeah, I mean, I uh, even got Carol Burnett on there with Tim Conway. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but it, it, it's just that the, the the type of show is so mm -hmm. different, and uh, mm -hmm. um, it's all different. I, no, I just uh, I, and I used to watch a lot of TV, and I've got so many yeah. more. I, I think for one thing, this helps because I spend so <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've been uh, teaching Sunday school uh, once in a while, and you know, this is something you have you can't just step into it and say, "Okay, I'm going to do it." Uh, and I've found that I spend more time on these kind of things, and I can turn that TV off anytime. We done that. We involved, got involved too in the Thursday night uh, Bible study with Steve and Kathy DeBuller and another uh, couple we know. We got another couple we know. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, yeah. We're really, yeah. We, we jump from one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I was saying yeah. too, and I, I feel like that's all I'm doing, which is good. I don't watch yeah. TV either. It, is. Yeah. But, uh, it, but it does keep you hopping yeah, up. Yeah, I do Thursday mornings too on Zoom. Yeah. Or Frank now. Everybody has TV in the bedroom. But Plus, I, I kids ball games, although we haven't made room in yeah, there. I can go in there and I can. Yeah. That and I like to read. All right. Uh, 25. What else does the false prophet do to get people under his and the Antichrist control? He calls his altar receipt. A mark on her hand or Right, and what forces people to receive this mark? You can't buy or sell without it. If you can't buy or sell, you're not going to live very long, are you? I read somewhere where it said that the Israelites did that way back when. And I can't remember what verse it was. I thought it might have been in Deuteronomy. Hmm. That verse where they said that they had to have the mark on there to buy or sell. No. As well, no. I, I don't remember because no. no. it was like they said it in one of the little footnotes hmm. that I had mm -hmm. on there. I'll have to find it again. But you know, right now in Europe, they're putting the chips in the hand that you instead of using mm -hmm. the your cards, cards or something, you run yeah. your hand across the paper. Everything it's yeah. all done. So we'll finish this list, and I'll, I'll tell you something else. That, uh, <laughs> that's going on here in this country right now. Mm -hmm. Nice. But you probably ain't going to lie. <laughs> what is the number that uh, will be used in verse 18? Six six, 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 six. And what's this particular number? Why is it this particular number? It's the number of men. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and I've also seen, you know, that's another one of those that's... Uh, Got a bunch of theories. A lot of speculation on that. Speculation, yeah. Uh, a lot of them pertaining to Nero and. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. How can a person be deceived by Satan? I 
doubting God. God won't care if you do this just once. Yeah. A religious spirit that is not of God worship worshiping them by faking their holiness, by distracting us with worthless pursuits. I'm going to tell you what I put here too. It's it taught me to read what taught in school and they found doubt in your mind when they threw all them other theories in mm -hmm. and that They gave me problems for a while. Mm -hmm. you know. And then through the media, of course, mm -hmm. and what you see in here, through mm -hmm. the temptations fail, of the flesh. When we fail to understand what the will of God is, we will fail to see what is important. And when we fail to see what is truly important, nothing will be important, not even prayer, and the preaching of God's word. Aren't we pretty much that way now? Yeah. People are not praying and people are not coming to the they're not, they're, not re word. they're not reading their Bible. They're not familiar no. with the Bible. They're not seeking God's wisdom and guidance and protection and prayer. They're just... It has to be more than... You have to be more than a smoke. That's a Sunday morning only. Yeah. <laughs> I never heard that one before. Yeah. <laughs> Smith. Smith. Sunday morning at least. The closer we are to God, the, the less easier it is for Satan to deceive us. Mm -hmm. What are some of the methods that he uses? Well, I think some of you talked about that, but uh, a lot of times uh, they'll try to make our desires seem legitimate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, make uh, God's will for our life seem uh, unreasonable uh, by convincing you that you'll have time later, you'll have another day to get right with God. Yeah. Uh, God is a good God. He, you know, he'll over. He loves this. you. God he is knows. love. He loves you. Yeah. yeah. But he doesn't love sin. What I was saying about the Deuteronomy 6 8, it was just saying the same thing about the 666. Oh. That's what that, I just found it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, write down some verses that teach us how to overcome Satan and that God's power is greater than his. And again, there's a lot of them. Lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My favorite's Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon against me shall prosper. <laughs> that's, his, that's his first one. That's his first one. <laughs> Two of my other favorites is, is Romans 8, 31. Is, mm -hmm. What then shall that we uh, say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against, against us? us? Mm -hmm. And then 37, 8, 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. That's to my favorite. I like 1 Peter 5, uh, 8 and 9. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaming lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. I got that one. Yep. <laughs> I just wrote down, the, I, I have a couple that you all read too. Yes. I just wrote down the ones that really mm -hmm. spoke to me. That's okay, a fourth thing, but that's yeah. my teeth. Oh, he was looking at you, I thought maybe you, you had one. You're quiet tonight. Yeah, I thought well, maybe man. you wanted to share one at the end. I'm... Oh, I have several of them. <laughs> <laughs> one was First John 2, 13. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah 23, 9. Second Timothy 1, 7. Mm -hmm. several. Mm -hmm. And I think I heard you say that. Yeah, I thought I was going to say Yeah, spirit. Yeah. Power of love Mine. I always like the one that says, when the enemy comes to me like a flood, I will raise a standard. And this is my standard. <laughs> and he goes, choo, 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 choo. And I want uh, second Chronicles 2015. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. That is mm -hmm. That's a real good. Mm -hmm. 
All right, before Tommy goes into his dissertation on whatever he has, anybody have anything else? I'm anxious to hear it, I really am, but I, just, I know this is going to take us till maybe bedtime. Yeah, it's not that long. Does anybody have anything else? No. I'll let uh, Leonard uh, go ahead and shut off the Facebook. I'll go ahead and have prayer, and then that way you can go for as long as you want. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to take that long.